Hi, I'm Marcus from Cross Country and we're going to look at the Cyride SysNav XL. This is the latest version of Cyride's all-in-one compact GPS vario that you can put on your risers so you don't need to have an instrument deck or anything like that, making it great for volbeard and hike and fly. So let's open the box and have a look at what's inside. Inside we've got the case with the instrument itself. And apart from that, there's a sticker and a cable. It's a USB cable. It's a USB A to C because the port, the charging port on the actual instruments a USB C port. If I open up the case, this is the actual instrument. You see it's a very compact unit, much smaller than your average Vel Vario. And it's got Velcro loops on the back, so you can attach it to your riser and a little loop to clip into the carabiner. I've been flying with the original SysNav, mainly on my tandem, because you can put it up on the spreaders and it's in a perfect place to be able to see what's going on. So if I go and find that, we can compare the old with the new. So I found my SysNav and this is the new one and this is the old one. I'm putting them side by side, you can see they're the same size and they weigh pretty much the same. In actual fact, I think this is slightly lighter. There's still the same three buttons at the bottom that allow you to step through the screens and go into the function menus. And the other difference is the new one has a USB-C charge point, whereas the old one had the old style USB port. But the biggest difference is the screen, which you'll be able to see when we switch it on outside. So let's go and see how it looks, how the standard screens are. Then I'll look at how you can modify them with Cyride's online tools, and also how you can connect this to the Cyride mobile app. Okay, when you turn on the instrument for the first time, it looks for the GPS, and then you'll get the standard screens. So we just wait a moment as it grabs the GPS. Obviously this can take a while, depending on whether it's moved a lot. So this is the first screen that's got your altitude, your speed, and your Vario plus a paragraph. So these are the standard screens that it comes with. Second screen is a thermal assistant with a vary on the side and it will give you an idea of the wind. It also can be set to also switch between this and the previous one. But you have to do this in the software that I'll show you in a bit. This gives you details of the route and a little map of some airspace. And this final screen gives you the closest airspaces to you, plus some other information about your flight and the time. And then there's a map screen. This isn't so useful, apart from when you're flying a defined task, and then it'll, it's useful to show you which way to go with the task. Then there's a screen where you can save your position in case you need to mark where somebody's had an accident or something, or you want to mark a new turn point. There's a navigation menu where you can choose your routes and start and stop them. There's a limit to what you can do on the instrument itself. You can't create a new route, but we'll get on to how you can do that in the field in a minute. Here you have the Bluetooth menu and the, with this you can attach it to your phone, your mobile phone, and there's a Cyride app. Or you can choose to send the data to an app like XC Track or Fly Sky High if you've got an iPhone. There's also a flight log. Obviously this is a new instrument so there's no flights in it. And then we have the settings menu. You can click to go into that. It tells you a bit about the instrument itself. You can choose the volume. You can choose the up and down limits. And 
and that's about it. There are more parameters you can set from the software than you can here. So let's have a quick compare of the old with the new. So I've got the new instrument here, and here's the old instrument starting up. As you can see, the screen's a lot smaller and not quite as easy to see. You have to have it right dead straight. The screen is a lot better. It's a lot easier to read and it's a lot higher resolution as well. And that's the big thing because that allows you to have more information because you can have smaller blocks that are still readable. So now let's look at how we can modify the screen on the SysNav using the online tools. So if you go to the SciRide website, you can go to the SysNav Excel page and there you'll find some of the tools. So we've got the route maker and we've got the screen customizer as well as the sound setup tool. If we go to the screen configurator, it allows us to change, create the screens we want. Now it gives us a blank, but down the bottom, you can download the default setup. I've done that and then I can re-upload it into the configurator to give me the standard screens you just saw. Now, if I want to change this, I can click on an item and I can change the size, for instance. So if I want to fit more in, I can change the size of all these bits, put them closer together, and that gives me a little bit more room. And then I can also delete things I don't want. And I can add from this list of different boxes. So there's a whole selection of different boxes. We've got the standard flying information that you might need, Vario, speed, height above takeoff, your thermal gain. And there's also stuff like wind speed and direction and things like this graphical wind indicator. Then there's lots of other useful boxes for navigating tasks, etc., such as glide to goal, glide to the next waypoint. And you can build these onto screens to create competition screens. You can even put a free text so you can put a note to yourself. One very useful thing is the wind reports. Now this is a box that connects via your mobile phone using Bluetooth to get information from winds.mobi. So there's wind information coming from various weather stations. When you add this to the screen, you can then choose just what information it displays. So you can either choose to choose to display the information from the closest weather station, the closest weather station in the valley, the closest weather station on the peak, or you can choose a specific weather station from this map. I'm going to just leave it on the closest weather station because then you'll get the information you need from what's happening around you. At the bottom, you can set whether the screen switches automatically. So for instance, you can set it to switch to screen two, which is the thermal map screen automatically when it thinks you're in a thermal. When you're happy, you can download your setup file. So let's do that. Once you've done it, you need to use SysTools. SysPC tool is an app that Syro provide for their, their instruments, and it runs on Windows PCs, Mac OS, and also Linux. Now this allows you to send that file that you've just created to the instrument. So I've already connected my instrument, and I go to my downloads area, and there's the file and I can send that to the file and it's done. This tool is also useful for setting up the instrument so I can set up everything I need to do and then send the parameters to the instrument. So I can set up my name, my glider and any IDs for IGC files. I can change the thresholds for rising air and sync, change the sensitivity of the vario, put on the instant vario if I want to, have a lifty air sound, so a lifty air sniffer sound. I can choose whether the Vario auto starts on takeoff, select the G-force alarm threshold, 
and also the glide ratio filter. I can also set the language and you can see there's French, Spanish, German, Japanese and Chinese as well as English. If I make any changes, such as that, I can then send the parameters to the instrument and it's done. As soon as I disconnect it, it's ready to fly. So if you've created your own instrument setup, you can keep that for safety as a backup and you can load it and change it if you need to. And this is a good example of how much information you can get on one screen. So I've got my altitude, my speed and my vario, as well as the wind indicator, a wind report box and the flight time and the cumulative distance which is pretty much all the information I want on one screen. I then have a thermal screen and I can set it to automatically jump to the different screens. So again, if I want to upload this, I just go to PC Tools, find that file in my Syroid folder. There it is. Upload it and it's on my screen. If you want to create a cross-country route that you can then navigate to, you have to use the route maker. This allows you to click on the map. So we can click here, create a waypoint. We change the size of the waypoint. Then we click over here, make another waypoint. Over here for another waypoint. And then finally, the finished waypoint. You can then change the radiuses as you feel fit. So I can change that one, I can change that one, or I can go in here and just do it the, by typing it in. So I get accurate ones. Once I've done that, I can download the root file and then again, I can use the SysPC tool to upload that file. And there it is, it's a KML file. You can also upload waypoint files. Using Bluetooth, you can connect your instrument to your phone. This allows you to send data to and from your instrument. To do this, you need the Syride app. So you need to go to your app store, search for Syride, and you should find it. And here it is. I can then just download it and open it. The first thing you need to do is connect it to a Syride account. And this is where all your flights will be uploaded and also where you can send people to check your live tracking. The system only uses Syride's live tracking, not any other like LiveTrack24. So you just need to go in and log in. Then, once you're logged in, you need to connect to your SysNav XL. So Syride will ask to use your Bluetooth, and then you can scan for devices. And on the Syride itself, you have to turn the Bluetooth on. So I'm just going to turn the Bluetooth on. Just wait a few seconds. And now I'm connected to my device. And if I go to this screen, it shows you that my device is connected. And then I can change various things. So I can look at the parameters or I can set up routes. If I go to the parameters, I can change any of the parameters on the device itself. So I've got all my usual thresholds the various sensitivity, whether I want the instant varia working, so I can switch that on for instance, and even change the language. And I can change my glider ID, etc. So I can put whatever glider I want. When you come out of that screen, those changes are sent automatically to the instrument. The other thing I can do is choose routes. Now it's got one route from the instrument, but I can add routes as well. So I can choose to get those routes either by scanning a QR code 
or loading a file or creating one manually. I can also edit the route that's in there. So if I wanted to change the waypoints, I can go in and change the radius and the description, but I can't change it graphically. Once I've done that, I can transfer it to the device or I can just cancel out of this. Also, I can choose whether my live tracking is on and whether it's private or public. If it's public, anybody can see it. If it's private, I can just send that link to certain people. I can also choose to send the track log automatically to SciRide servers at the end of my flight when I land. You can then even get that to send it on to XE Contest automatically. When the instrument's set up like this, it will be able to send data to and from the instrument. So it can send wind information to the instrument from winds.mobi, for example. The other way of connecting it is to use it with a different app, but you can't use both live tracking and connecting to a different app such as XE Track or Fly Sky High. You would then have to rely on that app's live tracking and it won't go to SciRide servers. This system will also tell you if there's firmware updates or any changes to the other software and gives you other information about people's flights. So it's like a little blog as well. So now the instrument's set up, we can take it flying and hopefully you can see how the information is displayed from the internet onto the instrument in the air, how it sounds and how it's like to use. Plus, we'll be able to see a track log and how it's displayed, which is the same for live tracking. So you can see the user interface that um, anybody following you will see. This is the standard screen. And you can see I've got it up, so I've got a wind readout from the meter, from the wind meter that's in front of me over there. So this wind meter, this wind reading is coming to my phone and then onto the instrument via the SciRide app. And you see, I've got my altitude, my speed, my vario. I've also got the wind readouts. So I've got everything I need on one screen. And then I've got a thermal, a thermal map. So if I'm thermally, I can use this. If I get a thermal in a second. Then I've got the route map, which I have set up. And then we've got the airspace. And you can see I'm fairly close to some airspace now. It's warning me about it. So I can go back to the... Now you should be able to see the thermal map. So it means I was in a thermal then. Just left it. Just to find it again. So now you say I'm in the lift. Third into the lift. Not super high, I've got another hundred feet to go to the side. So that's the side riding instrument in the air. Hope that's useful. You see a bit about how it is. Once you've set up your instrument and you've done a couple of flights, if you go back into your SciRide.com website, you can log into your account and you can see your activity. Here you can see that I've connected to live tracking when I was just doing this setup. And here's a flight, a little flight I did from Gordon. As you can see, it's a nice 2D view. You can look around the flight, you can scroll through it, and you can see all the information such as altitude, speed, vario, etc. And you get some overview information here. So the top vario, and you'll get your XC distance. You can then choose, of course, to share it on Facebook, and you can upload it to XC Contest. Although, of course, you can set it up so it does this automatically when you land. And you can also download the flights as IGC files, Google Earth files, or even in zip format, just in case you need them. You can, of course, do this straight from the instrument as well. 
those files, the IGC files are kept on the instrument, so you can do that. There's also a 3D view, which is, gives us a great way of playing back the flights. And this is the same view is available for live tracking, so when people are watching you, they can watch you in 3D. Of course, this is just for SciRide live tracking. Unfortunately, at the moment, SciRide doesn't forward any live tracking onto other services. So if your club uses a different service, you'll have to use a different app. And that's the flight playback tool. So that's the SysNav XL. It's a really great choice if you want all the functionality of one of the bigger instruments, but you want a compact unit that you can put on your risers. I really like having the live tracking that just works seamlessly, you don't have to do anything. And I also like having the weather information sent from the internet onto the instrument so I can see what's going on. Plus it's got all the functionality you could need. If you've got this far, thanks for watching and we hope you found it useful. We're always looking to improve our review so if you have any thoughts, drop them in the comments below. And don't forget to give us a subscribe and a like if you've enjoyed it. Until next time, safe flying.